Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a long time since I have recorded a vlog and I thought, new camera, new year, I'm going to try and record some more vlogs for you guys. So, as a bit of an update, it's been a bit of a weird start to the year. We actually had a four day power cut during the recent storms and as a result we lost the entire contents of two freezers which was really gutting. However, trying to use this as a chance to start fresh and get really organised. I've been getting into really bad eating habits of just like going and grabbing microwave meals which is just expensive and not really great for you. So I'm trying to batch cook a few things and freeze some things and I've also ordered some meals um, which I'm really excited for. So I'm just going to kind of talk you through that and hopefully it will help anyone else who's struggling with eating things in a hurry because it just means I've got things in the freezer which I can just defrost and eat and they're there. And um, yeah, so I'm going to talk you through what I've been cooking this week for my gluten-free batch cooking mission. <laughs> So in this mega batch of bolognese, I've got celery, got carrot, garlic, and red onion and white onion, just a mixture of what I had, and some olive oil, and I'm gonna fry this for about five minutes or so until it softens up nicely, nice and slowly so it doesn't catch. But this is what forms the base. It's a really great way to get some hidden veg in actually if you've got kids who don't like veg. Chop it up a bit smaller than this and I'll never know. I've now added all the herbs. And a kilo of beef mince. Don't think I'm going to be able to stir this 100. That's a lot of food. So these are the beef stock pots that I use. They're the gnaw ones. I tend to just use gnaw because they're all marked fairly gluten free, but actually, there's loads of gluten free stock cubes out there. I will link down below, um, I've done a bit of a roundup of gluten free stock cubes and gravies, but anyway, I've popped two of these in because I'm doubling the recipe on my blog. As you can see, we have moved to the serious hob. Don't know about anyone else, do you have a favourite hob? This one's my favourite. Front left, use it for everything, but no, middle hob is when it gets serious. So here we are, making some serious bolognese. So once this sauce is all mixed together, I'm just going to pop a lid on. As you can see, I've moved it to the less serious hob. This hob is reserved for simmering purposes in my house. Um, so I'm just going to bring that back up to a simmer, leave it here for about 45 minutes to an hour. Basically, the lower and slower you cook this, the better. And I'm actually not eating this till tomorrow at least, and most of it's going in the freezer, so that's going to make it even better. If you can make it the night before, it makes such a difference. So while the bolognese is cooking, I have moved over to the never used right hand front hob to make my gluten free cheese sauce because Steve's requested gluten free mac and cheese tonight. And I thought if I make a big batch, I can use that and some of the bolognese sauce to make lasagna. So I've got some red lesser cheese, I've got extra mature grated cheddar, a bit of parmesan, some gluten free flour, milk and butter. That's all you need to make a really good cheese sauce. I do have a mac and cheese recipe on the blog, which I will link in the caption down below. So in brief, the way that I make this is I heat the butter up and then I add the flour, make it into a nice thick paste. And then we're going to add the milk gradually and keep whisking it. I probably won't film a lot of this because you need to keep, keep, keep whisking. And that is how you make sure it doesn't get lump free. If you just chuck all the milk in now, it's just going to be a bit of a mess and you'll probably have to blend it, which I have done before. Um, but once I get the milk in, this should all come out of the whisk. And that is really how simple it is to make a cheese sauce. So obviously I'll add the cheese in when that's done. As I'm whisking this, it's just getting thicker as it cooks. So this will happen, you'll put the milk in, it'll go runny, you whisk it up, it'll go thick, you put more in. And it's just, if you're doing this by eye, like I am, rather than to a recipe, you just need to keep going until you've got the sauce consistency you want and that also when it does come up to the boil it doesn't suddenly get really thick and you're like oh what's happened here so i would obviously recommend following a recipe but if you're like me and you're just freestyling it just keep going until you've got no lumps you're happy with the thickness and uh that's how you make a cheese sauce on the fly kids don't try this at home use a recipe it works much better okay this has now had an hour 
Beautiful. And let that sit and cool down before it goes in the freezer. Which I think I'll do tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day. I have stickered these up ready to go in. So I've got four portions for two people in here. And then I've saved the other half to make lasagna with, um, which is still in the fridge. So I've just written on what it is, how many portions, and when I've frozen it, I'm going to pop this in my freezer. The poor freezer is looking a bit desolate at the moment. So I've obviously got ice packs, essentials. Um, I put the spag bowl here. And then I just got a few bits. So I've got some meatballs, which were on a yellow sticker offer half price and they're gluten free so I thought I'd get them to defrost and cook up at some point. I've got mozzarella sticks because obviously they are life. Um, the Sainsbury's ones are gluten free. But the Sainsbury's sweet potato fries. These are like an accidentally gluten free find but I love them. Um, some packs of veg. So this isn't the main freezer but these are just to restock the one in the kitchen. So I've got stir fry veg. And chopped peppers because I use them a lot. And then finally the emergency gluten-free pizza which is sat at the bottom ready for the nights when I can't be bothered to cook. So I completely forgot to film making this but I've made a lasagna, a massive lasagna with the leftover bolognese and cheese sauce and garlic bread. I didn't have any rolls so I've just used slices of bread with garlic butter. So this will be dinner. No, any leftovers will go in the freezer. Okay, so the final thing I've got for my freezer is this delivery from Chef Akila, I think is how you pronounce it. I was sent some of these to try a couple of years ago and oh my word, they are so good. They're basically just like a takeaway curry. They're all completely gluten free, but they're better for you than a takeaway curry. And they're only like eight pounds for a serving, which is for two people. So I've got some of the butter chicken, which is my least favorite. I've got the going chicken curry, which sounds delicious. The Chetanad chicken curry, which I remember being really nice before. It's got like fennel in it. And then this is the village chicken curry, um, which is also amazing. And a lot of these are like lower calorie. So they're much lower calorie and lower fat than any takeaway meal. And then I also got this Corella fried chicken biryani, which just looked incredible. And you see they're all clearly marked gluten free. This one's actually won a free from award, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna try and get one out. They're frozen at the moment, so they come frozen. This is very difficult with one hand. Ooh, you get a really good portion. This says for two, but honestly, I think. That would probably be enough for one of us because we are quite piggy. But yeah, so I'm going to pop all these in the freezer along with my meals. And it just means that when we've got those nights where we come back late from the gym and we don't know what to eat, then we've just got kind of a healthier option than just going and grabbing like a microwave meal or a takeaway. So I'm very excited. The only problem is I don't know which one I'm going to eat first. But yeah, I'm going to pop them in the freezer for now because I've just been out of pizza and I'm so full up I cannot even think about dinner. So that's it for this vlog guys, really hope you find it helpful. I can't wait to start planning for those meals and I actually had one of the Chef Akila meals last night. We had the fried chicken biryani. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was just like I remembered when they sent me samples and it tasted like even better than a takeaway biryani. So I'm really excited to order more of those. I'm already thinking about doing their monthly subscription services and this is not by any means an advert. I will put an affiliate link down below for their meals, but I bought those off my own back and I am so excited to buy more and also support a smaller business. So it's so much more exciting than buying stuff from the supermarket when they all arrived. So yeah, I can't wait to tuck into all those meals. And if you found this helpful, let me know in the comments below and I can film more stuff like this because I'm always doing batch cooking and I'm always trying to kind of come up with new ideas of things that will save me time and money. So let me know in the comments if you like this sort of thing and I'll see you guys again hopefully soon. Hit subscribe for my next video.